Hey YouTube, this is 4th Street Garage at 4th Street Garage. Got to give a shout out to the cameraman, Iska Fan, running the camera today. And we've got his car in the shop again. <clears throat> We're going to show you how to uh, read diagnostic codes on a Volvo 240. If you've got a Volvo 240 that is uh, 89, 1989 or newer, it will have a uh, the 2.4 fuel injection system, which has a self-diagnostic system. It's a primitive system uh, by today's standards. And you don't hook it up to a computer to read the codes, but instead there is a, a little box here on the driver's side fender up on the brake booster, and you can retrieve the codes by observing a flashing light on here. This uh, diagnostic system uh, has three different functions. Uh, it will uh, allow you to read any codes that are um, stored in the memory of the computer. <coughs> the computer can store up to three codes at a time, so you can read those. Um, you can use it to test the inputs to the uh, ECU, and you can measure or you can test the outputs from the ECU. So I'm going to show you how to do all three of those. In addition, you can also test the ignition system with this uh, self-diagnostic setup. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. All the, all the test codes um, that you're going to receive are three-digit codes. Uh, on this test box, you pull the cap off like that, and inside the cap is a test lead. There it is. And it's kind of hard to see from the angle you're at, but there are, there are some there are some ports on here, some test ports, and the ones that are important are 2 and 6. We're going to do fuel injection test first, so I'm going to plug this test lead into port number 2. Once you got that plugged in, you're going to turn on the ignition. Alright, the ignition is on, and what you're going to do to initiate the test is to push this little button here um, for more than one second, but not longer than three seconds. One, one, one. So what you just saw there was the first, the first code. Uh, again, it's three digits, and all three digits on this test turned out to be one. So we're getting a one, one, one code. So one, one, one is not uh, a fault code. It's the all code clear. showing that it's all clear. Yes. Yep. Well, next we're going to go ahead and. Uh, test the inputs to the ECU. These are various sensors that uh, send information to the ECU to help it run. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my have ISCA fan uh, turn the ignition to the on position, the run position, and I'm going to plug the diagnostic lead once again into port number two. Then I'll ask ISCA fan to push the throttle all the way open, push it to the floor. All right, he's going to hold it there, and this time I'm going to enter the second function of the diagnostic by pushing the button twice. Each time I push it, I'm going to hold it for at least one second, but not longer than three seconds. And after I do that, the LED should start to flash rapidly. All right, there's the rapid flash. Now, I'm going to have uh, Iska Fan close the throttle, take his foot off of it. The flashing stops. And if everything's good, we've got three, three, three. So we get the code 333. Three, three. And that tells us that the throttle switch, full throttle circuit, is good. It's working fine. All right, the second test we're going to do is I'm going to have Visca fan um, partially depress the accelerator and see if we get a code. There's a three. Three. And a two. The code three three two 
indicates that the idle circuit is working properly, and then it uh, continues to flash there. Now, if during either of these tests the, fl the fast, the rapid flashing of the LED continued, that would tell us we'd have a problem, and we'd have to check, in this case, the uh, throttle position sensor on the throttle, the manifold. All right. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to have Iskafan start the engine. And we're to watch for a code. Three. Three. One. The code 331 tells us that the uh, ECU is receiving a signal from the speed sensor. If the light had continued to fla flash rapidly like it is now, we would know that uh, there would be a problem with the signal from the speed sensor. All right, the next test we're going to do is a test of the AC micro switch for the air conditioning. So I'm going to have Iskafan turn on the air conditioner and watch for a code. One. One. Four. One one four is the code that tells us that the micro switch is working properly. Um, so we've tested all of the uh, inputs to the ECU. All right, the third test we're going to do is to test the output from the ECU to the fuel injectors and the uh, idle air control valve. So the way we're going to do that is the same that we did it before. I'm going to have Iskafan turn the ignition to on. And I'm going to plug the test lead into socket 2 again. Now this time I'm going to get into the third function of the ECU self-diagnostic by pushing the button three times, holding it for at least one second, uh, but no longer than three seconds each time. If you hear that noise, that noise is the fuel injectors cycling on. And that noise is the idle air valve switching on and off. So the test comes back positive for both of those. They're both working properly. If you have a uh, 3.1 fuel injection system on your car, uh, that test would also operate the cold start valve, but this is a 2.4, so there's no valve to test. All right, the next set of diagnostic tests will involve the ignition system. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the test lead, and instead of putting it in port 2, I'm going to put it in port 6 this time. This is for the ignition, the series of ignition tests. Now I'm going to have uh, ISCA fan turn the ignition to on, or the run position. And to initiate the first set of diagnostics, I'm going to push the button uh, just once for more than one second, but less than three seconds. This will give us the stored codes in the memory. One. 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 And so that tells us that there are no faults with the with the system. Alright, we're going to enter into the second part of the diagnostic, uh, diagnostic test for the ignition system. Once again, I've got the uh, diagnostic lead inserted into port 6, and I'm going to have Iskafan turn the ignition to the on position. And this time I'm going to push the button uh, twice for uh, more than one second, but less than three seconds each time. That'll get us into the diagnostic uh, part two of the diagnost diagnostic check. Once the light starts to rapidly flash like that, I'm going to have Iskafan open the throttle partially by pushing the pedal down a little bit. There you go. Get a code. Three.
three. Four. The code 334. Code 334 tells us that the, um, the throttle switch is working properly. All right, the next test that we're going to do here is to uh, test the speed sensor. So I'm going to have Iska fan start the car and we will watch for a code. One. Four. One. The 141 code tells us that the uh, ECU is receiving a signal from the speed sensor. Well, throughout this entire process, I've been taking advantage of the uh, Bentley Volvo 240 service manual. Uh, excellent resource if you're working on your own Volvo 240. Probably the best manual there is. Um, and in this manual, of course, they have all these different fault codes that you'll be reading if you have any faults for the fuel injection system. They have the instructions on how to do the tests I just did. Um, here's the part for the ignition system. And if you do get a fault code, they tell you how to check each of the components that uh, you might get a code for. I'm not going to go through all that, but I would highly recommend uh, getting a copy of it. Definitely worth the investment if you're going to spend any time working on a Volvo 240.